Tuesday on our show, Stephen A. Smith said that he's hearing that if Kevin Durant doesn't stay in Oklahoma City, L.A. is his primary objective as a landing spot as opposed to South Beach or even his home of Washington. Kevin Durant responded to this on Friday. Here's what he said. I don't talk to Stephen A. Smith at all. Nobody in my family, my friends, they don't talk to Stephen A. Smith, so he's lying. If you ask me a question, I'll talk about them. But like I said before, I have people who I talk to about everything, and I know for a fact they didn't talk to him, so he's making up stories. Stephen A., waiting to hear what you had to say about this all weekend. I know a lot of people are. What's your response to this? <clears throat> well, my first response, Molly, Skip, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is that I'm incredibly happy that this happened on a Friday after first take because I will openly confess to you that had I had to come on the air that next day mm -hmm. after reading somebody questioning my credibility and my character mm -hmm. I can promise you it would have been very bad Kevin Durant is the one that's lying. I have interviewed Kevin Durant. His rookie year, I interviewed him at his home in Seattle. I interviewed him years ago when we were in Orlando for Sports Center. I've talked to him on several occasions, literally within the last year, where we've run across one another at an arena. Mm -hmm. Or one time we saw each other at 4040 because obviously he's being repped by Rock Nation right now, whatever the case may be. No reporting that went on in that regard. Right. Just pleasantries and things of this nature. That statement that he came out with, that was a surprise to me because I had no idea that he had any kind of problem with me whatsoever. Okay. I wasn't aware of it. So it was news to me. That's point number one. Point number two is... What it comes down to is that Kevin Durant is trying to put me put in some kind of jacket or whatever the case may be. Let me be very, very clear. My brother, it does not fit. You are in no position to question my credibility whatsoever. A matter of fact, one would argue what position are you in to question the credibility of anybody in the media, particularly when the last time we really heard you say anything of significance, it was when you were addressing the media or undressing the media in February yep. and telling them, could y'all put up this quote for America to see, please? Here it is right there. You guys really don't know bleep. To be honest, man, I'm only here talking to y'all because I have to. So I really don't care. Y'all not my friends. Y'all going to write what you want to write. You're going to say what you want, what you're going to love us one day and hate us the next. That's part of it. So I just had to learn how to deal with it. Come back to me, please. Kevin Durant said that in response to idiotic questions, he felt the media was asking him about head coach Scott Brooks and his potential tenure because Scott Brooks obviously took them to the playoffs, won over 65 percent of the games, was doing a fabulous job, at least in Kevin Durant's mind, so much so that the year before Kevin Durant said, hey, I think this guy should be the coach of the year. So he deemed the questions ridiculous. That was in February. What happened in April, Skip? Scott Brooks was fired. <laughs> Okay, and now Billy Donovan is coaching. So those same people that you were talking about, those same people you labeled essentially idiotic, although to your credit you got wise and came back and apologized, ultimately you showed your true feelings. It's like somebody that's a bit inebriated, somebody that's really speaking their yeah, mind absolutely. and their heart, and then they want to turn back and say, well, you know what, we really apologize. When well, you really, really didn't mean to, you just upset that the heat that came your way was something that you couldn't deal with. He also went on to say, Nobody that I know really talks to him. Well, his own mother was on this show. Um, his brother Tony is somebody that I've ran across on many occasions. And the last point that I would like to make is that if nobody speaks to me, then maybe you need to check with folks in your inner circle again and ask why did I receive phone calls over this weekend with people telling me, let's chill, this little beef that's going on. So evidently you're wrong about that too. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. And let's talk about what's really going on. I sit here today incredibly offended by the personal attack that this man has put against me. Even in the midst of all of that, 
Let me tell you, Skip Bayless, Kevin Durant is a good dude. His family is wonderful. He's wonderful. There's nothing negative that I have to say about this person as a human being. I am addressing what he said about me. I am not attacking Kevin Durant. As I said on my own Twitter account, in response to him, the game is better when he's playing. Sure. I consider him one of the top two players in the world. How many times have you sat here and heard me say, Skip Bayless, I consider him one of the best professional athletes as a person I have ever met in my life. He is that decent and that good of a young man, which is why it disappoints me that I have to sit here and address him the way that I have to address him. Because the reality is, is that, number one, you don't know who I talk to. Number two, if I'm so wrong, why haven't you not signed an extension with the Oklahoma City to stay for years and years to come? Is it not you that alluded to how you're willing to entertain free agency? Are you trying to tell me you're not going to consider the second largest market in the United States of America, particularly with Kobe Bryant scheduled to depart? That's that, and it's clearly a home that Russell Westbrook, who starred at UCLA, might not mind going to a year after you go, if indeed that were the case. All of these things that I said make absolute sense. At no time did I say that I spoke to Kevin Durant. At no time did I say that I spoke to people in this inner circle. I recall an individual by the name of LeBron James who wasn't speaking to anybody, but who broke the story that he was going to South Beach. Mm -hmm. Since when do I need to sit there and speak to people that you deem trustworthy individuals to find out what is going on with you? Which brings me to the issue, issue that I unapologetically, not shy about it, and more than willing to address. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, because I know that we as reporters don't like to say this because it comes across as, you know, a bit boisterous or whatever the case may be. I'm sorry, Skip Bayless. My career spans 20 plus years. How many reporters do you know has broken as many stories as I have? All of these folks that want to talk about me, Washington Post picking up the story, USA Today picking up the reputable publications. I'm not calling out anybody. I'm just addressing people who are willing to call me out. Are we willing to put my resume up against the people who talk about me? I welcome that. I know it's not popular to say, but this thing, this thought process that says, hey, well, you know what? He's just somebody who runs his mouth. I don't show up at NBA arenas. I'm not on the road. I'm not inside of those locker rooms. And more importantly, what I would like to ask Kevin Durant and some of the brothers who talk behind my back in the NBA that probably put him up to something stupid like this. Let me ask a question. Do you really want me to come out of this seat and go back on the scene? Do you really want to see me in an NBA arena? Because I can assure you I find out more in 10 minutes than I can get from 50 phone calls. I have proven it. Mm -hmm. Now, we can sit up here, we can debate all day long till the cows come home. I will put, I am a black man on national television with a big mouth. And I will still stand up here today and I will put my resume spanning 22 plus years up against anybody in this industry. We really want to go here? We really want to start something with me? You sure about that? I just want people to think about that because what I'm saying is this. How many times, Skip Bayless, have you seen me over the years sit here and say to me, we ain't getting into people's personal life. We ain't going there. We ain't touching. We just talk about their game. Mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook is a great guy. LeBron James is a role model extraordinaire. Kobe Bryant has overcome a lot of things. He's one of the greatest professional athletes I've ever seen. I don't just love Kobe. I revere him, regardless of how he feels about me at this moment in time, because he didn't like what folks were saying about the whole Lamarcus Aldridge fiasco. Is there anything else that I can say about Dwayne Wade, about how great of a person that I think he is? Steph Curry. You know, Chris Paul, the, uh, the list goes on and on and on. But the level of sensitivity that Charles Barkley and so many others have alluded to is growing quite alarming mm -hmm. because somehow, some way, everything is personalized. And it's gotten to the point where it's utterly ridiculous. Kevin Durant is the last person on earth that should be going off on the media like that. Not that he's done anything wrong, because the guy is a great person. And I still stand here and say that at this moment in time, the NBA is better mm -hmm. when Kevin Durant is around. Okay. He's, he's philanthropic. Sure. His charitable donations, American Red Cross, the list goes on and on. He's a phenomenal person, not just a player. But the guy and the sensitivity that these guys display 
the way they are on attack, somebody needs to tell them, it's time you pump the brakes. We don't have to talk to you to talk about you. You want to start something, that's just not the wise thing to do, especially when you have no validity. I am going to repeat. I said, if OKC, if Kevin Durant decides to leave OKC, I'm hearing that L.A. is a prime spot mm -hmm. that he is considering. Not to say he's not considering D.C., Miami, New York or whatever. That's what I heard. I'm not lying. If Kevin Durant, if I were wrong, Kevin Durant would have signed his extension with OKC. OK, you being represented by Rock Nation. I know these boys. They're not small timers. They don't want Kevin Durant just because his name. They want him because this brother's going to do big things and they're going to see to it that he's going to do big things. Are you trying to tell me these large markets are not a consideration? I said nothing offensive about him. I will not say anything offensive about him. I still stand here today telling you he's a good dude, mm -hmm. but he's wrong. And the guys that put it up to him, put him up to it in their own way. I'm not talking about literally his comments, but in their own way with their chirping behind my back all the time. Mm -hmm. They're wrong too. And the sensitivity that these guys are showing, they are making unnecessary enemies. Mm -hmm. I am not one of them. I won't be. I got too much love and respect for who these guys are and what they mean to my community. Okay. But I will say this lastly, you don't want to make an enemy out of me. And I'm looking right into the camera and I'm going to say it again. You do not want to make an enemy out of me. I'm not having it. I've done nothing okay. wrong and I'm not going to tolerate it. Let me stop you there. That's all I got to say. And I appreciate everything you just said. Do you realize you do not need to defend yourself on this, yes, issue, I do. this issue? Yes, I do. Your track record as a reporter doesn't just speak for itself, it screams for itself. Because nobody I know, and I know a lot of NBA reporters, is any more plugged in on every NBA level, top to bottom, than you are. I know there's some great reporters out there, but no one has been more consistently accurate on the news, little and big, that, that has been broken than you have been. I, I, I hang my hat every day on your reporting on this show. I value it, I cherish it, and, and it hurts me to watch you have to defend it because of what one immature, wrong-headed superstar continues to do. This has been a pattern, of you, as you pointed out, a pattern of behavior by Kevin Durant. Now, let me, let me frame it for you a little bit. This is the way I see it from the outside looking in. You, you love this guy as a player. You've sat in that seat morning after morning and defended him and lauded his play. Am I right? I mean, I've lauded both his play and him as a man. As a man. So I'm sure a part of you is stung by this, that he would, he would do this to you after all the support you have voiced for him. Am I right? Yes. Okay, now let me look at it from his side. I know for a fact he has worked hard to eliminate the size of his circle around him, that he's tried to tighten the circle of, of people close to him. And now it's down to pretty much a manager and an agent, and that's it. So I think he was stung that somebody that's no longer in what he considers his really tight inner circle is speaking to you, and he's paranoid about that. It doesn't matter because you know a lot of people who know a lot of people and I have no doubt that what you said is dead on and has been operating somewhere in Kevin's thoughts. It just put him in a little bit of an awkward position, but he could have handled it if he would just grow up. He could say, look, my heart's in Oklahoma City. I have no plans to leave here. Respect what Stephen A. says, but right now, that, that's way off base because this is what I'm going to do. There's, there's a way to handle that mm -hmm. that would make you, it wouldn't put you in an awkward spot because when you use the operative word, he's lying, I know that's going to push the deepest hot button in you because now your integrity has been called out in question. Remember this about Kevin Durant. He is playing under the most protective anti-media bubble in all of the NBA 
erected by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Am I right about that? Yes. They're, they're, they're so out of bounds in how they're teaching these kids to deal or not deal with the media because the media can be their friend. Most of those reports, the, the, the great story was done last year that we talked about on the Oklahoma City media and, and all the paranoia of the franchise. I don't know why it is, but it has now infected both, I think, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook and how they deal with the media. Is that fair to say? To some degree, it appears that way. Yeah, it appears that way. So I, I relate to you because you remember it's been, what, five years ago? Listen, there was no bigger Durant fan in the media than I was when he was a freshman at Texas. On, we're, we're going back to our cold pizza days. I used to every day say, this Kevin Durant is going to win scoring titles, plural, in the NBA. And the people I was debating would laugh and scoff at me. And then they lost by 21 in an early NCAA game to USC, Nick Young and company. And everybody said, you're going to be so wrong about this. And I continued to fight for my guy, Kevin Durant, until what happened? He turned on me as soon as I started criticizing his buddy Russell Westbrook for shooting a lot of Kevin shots. What did he tell the Oklahoma City media? Skip knows nothing about basketball. And it hurt me. It hurt my heart. I told you that on air. Like, what are you doing to me? I, why me? Why would you bite the hand that's been feeding you? And then I said it again after what he did at the All-Star Weekend. You're biting the hands that fed you the MVP. These same guys who voted you the MVP, you're telling them they don't know anything about basketball? That's so wrong-headed. It's so out of bounds. It's so immature. But Kevin wants to control the media. So now he's been named deputy publisher of this Players Tribune. Yes. You know, like so so that's he thinks now he can just go to the Players Tribune and write and say whatever he wants to say and he can control that. Well, you can't, Kevin. Because the pen, so to speak, in this case it's the media, is mightier than the sword. You know that. Well, the expression. thing about it is this. <clears throat> it's sad because Kevin Durant, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, who's bothering him? Who, who, who is bothering yeah. him? Where is the animosity coming from? And from the, you know, and this part is not about Kevin Durant. This is about, this part is about the fourth estate. This part is about the media. Mm -hmm. You had better wake up. It's real nice to gravitate to the headlines or whatever the case may be. But I got this chair. I get to respond. You do. And not only am I speaking up for myself, I'm doing something that's not done for me often. I'm speaking up for my contemporaries. My contemporaries religiously leave me to hang out and dry. But I'm sitting here speaking up for them. I don't cover Oklahoma City. Mm -mm. He, you know, they do. Why is he cussing y'all out because y'all asking about Scott Brooks? And then when you proved to be right and he was gone in April, where was Kevin Durant to be found to sit there and say, y'all had a point. Y'all were right. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that because clearly y'all knew something that I didn't know. Abs didn't know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. And so what you have is a situation where you have folks in the media who don't have our voice and they're sitting there and they're using these headlines and pouncing on it and you know you think you uplifting the athletes and the athletes are feeling emboldened because they get to come at us any old way well that's most of us not here i am not even i'm not trying to shoot i know how potent you are I'm not trying to dismiss skip at all but skip ain't me put that camera back on me skip ain't me and i ain't skip I'm not having that. I've, 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 I have been more fair. And I'm going to put that out there. You can yeah. say, well, you could put it at Kwame, Brown, Slava, Medved, all of this stuff. I'm joking around with names of guys that I think can't play. But when it comes to the meat and potatoes or what's going on in guys' lives, what's going on with people close to them that affect their life and affect their performance on yeah. a basketball court, what do I say? Zero. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yep. They want to use the example of Alan Iverson. Alan Iverson is my man. Don't compare yourself to Alan Iverson. Mm -hmm. That's like my little brother. We're that tight. You understand? So there are things that I may have done. You might look at it as wrong, but I looked at myself as trying to help him. And now we're as thick as thieves and we're as tight as ever. I love Alan Iverson in ways that I will never love most of these guys. Because I, but I respect them because I know what they mean to my community. I know what they stand for. And I know that by and large, they're even better as people then we give them credit for. But the level of sensitivity and the level of immaturity is leading you down a wrong path. And I, I can, this much I can promise you. And I want to say this to Kevin Durant again. 
This ain't no damn jump shooting contest. This ain't me playing on a basketball court. I couldn't shine your shoes. But this is a different arena. And the one thing I can promise you, you will never have the last word. There's a level of respect that I have continuously showed, and I will continue to show it, because I know what kind of young man that dude is. But he made a mistake here, and I feel the need to call him on it. I couldn't let it go. And from now on, this implication that I don't know stuff, y'all better think twice about that, mm -hmm. because when these NBA games come, you're going to see me at these arenas. And remember what I said to you, I can find out more in 10 minutes at a basketball arena than I can on the phone with 50 different people inside of two weeks. Think about that and ask yourself, do you really want to go there? I sincerely hope that I don't have to have this conversation with anybody again. Let's move on. Appreciate it. Let's leave it there. And to your haters, if you don't like somebody, Stephen A., but you watch everything they do, you're a fan. You both have a lot of fans. I've said this to Skip before. Much more First Take after the break. Keep it here.